we are live and I say that to all the guests but I, I actually noticed that since our first episode of Man Cave many moons ago Michael I actually said mm-hmm. that on the first one as well we are live so it's a, it's a trend thank you so much welcome back welcome and back man back. I can't believe yeah, you yeah. I can't believe it's been so long it's been a while Gosh, what pop culture milestones have we missed that we were not able to discuss on the podcast? Uh, I don't know. I mean, the, <laughs> I mean, look, we I did republish the as an archive exercise, um, like our first very first episode, and it did bring back a lot of memories um, oh, of Google Hangouts amongst other things oh, um, we all remember. remember when google hangouts was a thing <laughs> remember when google hangouts. but cheers thank you so much for coming on i cheers. salute you sir yeah mm. what is your beverage of choice tonight good so sir? tonight matthew um mm. i will be mostly drinking the adnams ease up ipa right it's sort of a bitter citrusy little number um yeah. more of a summer ale not as heavy as standard adnams goes down quite well too many of them gets a bit gets a bit samey if i'm going to be honest okay, right. but um it's all right what are you what are you down in well i'm down in i'm partaking in the rheinbacher premium pilsner oh, premium. there's nothing premium about it <laughs> i've had a premium pilsner and there was nothing like this yeah okay yes. When I was in Bavaria. When I was in Bavaria. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we do, we do actually, we can, you know, cast back to uh, one of the Man Cave episodes where you were in Germany in a bathrobe reporting. I was in a bathrobe. The- I was attending a trade show in Dusseldorf. There you go. Yeah. That is so it. I remember that you were recording that evening and I thought, why not have our first international uh Login, basically. Yeah, <laughs> An international yeah. login. That was quite cool, yeah. actually. It was quite a good moment. So, I mean, <laughs> mate, I mean, so what do you think then? It's, I've I was going to ask us to keep it going. What do you yeah. think? What do you think of, of what it is? You know, is it, uh, it's not a, I must admit, I haven't put the, I, I don't know, I, I kind of, I haven't really put the time in, I don't think. And not to yeah. to kind of knock myself and everything, but it's taken me a very long time to learn all this stuff on my yeah. own, and uh, and like you know how it's to like publish a, a podcast job, and do everything. Yeah, it is a learning process, but I think I think we're a bit further ahead than where we were. But still, though, I I still think the content and everything was just brilliant back then. It really was. Yeah, I mean, I was listening, I, I told you earlier this, but I was listening to the very first podcast, the one that you've uh, kindly re-uploaded, and yeah. uh, uh, my gosh, <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> what a difference, I must say. Yeah, you know? like uh, and subscribe out there, like the and audio. subscribe. Yeah, Especially the audio. The, <laughs> that's the main thing, I'd say. Mm. You know, The passion was there, the passion was definitely there. It's funny, because I was in a different house, but it looks like the same one. It's strange. I could have sworn you were in the same house. No, I'm not. <laughs> not at all. I actually, I actually had a really nice little man cave uh, there, but yeah. I don't know. It seems to have worked out with my crap in the background that it looks the same. But, See, I lost my man cave. Yeah, you were saying about that. Yeah, I, it, lo- it, I lost ooh. it to to my son. He's uh, he, he took uh, he pretty much took over it. He needed his room. Oh, when uh, when uh, number two came along, are they kids wanting beds, rooms? Oh, what is this? Yeah, no. hey, you could have put him in the coal shed like we grew up. Yeah, but you you know what, Liam? I like to think that uh, man cave is a concept rather than a physical space. Well, it's funny yeah. because the, that's how I actually do refer to it to my guests um, because it's <laughs> because I wanted to interview people. Um, I was kind of thinking, well, how, how do I actually link this to a man cave? Well, well how about if a man cave is a, is a metaphor for a, uh, something uh, you would go to, something that you do that nobody would ever have to, you know, you do it for free, um, mm. you know, something that you would love. It would be your man cave. It would be your happy place. And, exactly. and that's, that's the question I ask everybody. I could ask exactly mm-hmm. the same of you right now. Like, what is, what is your man cave? 
if it's not a physical, what, what is the metaphorical man cave that you use? These days, honestly, I'd say my man cave is in my earbuds. Um, by that, I mean, I just, when I want to retreat, I just, um, I just listen to a load of podcasts. Right, podcasts. And uh, yeah, I've been, that's the main, that's, you know, we're talking about what's changed in the three years since we last recorded um, mm. our podcast together. And I'd say since then, I've been consuming a lot more audio content. That's the main thing that's changed, I'd say. Have you got some go-tos and that you regularly do, yeah. look forward to new episodes? Yeah, I listen to um, the Pilot TV podcast. Okay. Uh, that's um, a podcast run by the, the same team at, um, at Empire Magazine. Yeah, Imagine Empire, but doing TV shows. So they oh. Uh, oh. discuss TV shows every week. Okay. That's one of them. Another one is um, How Did This Get Made, which is brilliant. Uh, <laughs> you know, do you know it? No, this is a good title for a podcast. It's brilliant how did this get made? It's, yeah. it's uh, three hosts discussing very, very passionately uh, a bunch of films which are quite, uh, frankly, quite rubbish. Mm. And, uh, and they just talk about how on earth did this get made? You know, they, they <laughs> some, some uh, you know, like all the proof that's in the pudding, you know, that's on the screen. So that, that's always a good, that's a good, uh, a good uh, 45 minutes spent, I'd yeah. say. And on the slightly more serious side, I like to listen to um, um, a podcast called You're Wrong About, right. which is, uh, but it's an American podcast. It's about two journalists who look at uh, Female, famous female figures in pop culture who have been much maligned in pop culture, and they try to rehabilitate them. You know, basically you with what, the benefit. They've been what with the benefit drift? of hindsight. Say, for example, uh, uh, do you uh, remember Lorena Bobbitt? Yes, Lorena Bobbitt, who cut yeah. off uh, John Wayne Bobbitt's um, winky dink um, and Indeed, became famous. Yes. Basically, at the time. She was portrayed in the media like as a my god, you know, bunny boiler, you know, psycho. Well, she did cut off. Her, uh, she did cut off her husband's penis while he was asleep. So that's that's not she really, did. yeah. That's like, but but as as the people say in the podcast, they're like she didn't just one day wake up and go in the middle of the hmm. night and say I feel like cutting off my husband's. She, she was driven like, to it, wasn't she? Well, what is it that pushes a person to that point and things like that? They uh, do a very very in depth. Uh, look at um, O.J. Simpson's wife, Nicole. Yes. Simpson, you know, that's quite a sad one. They do even historical figures. They did Marie Antoinette. Okay. Uh, I, I think the reason I enjoy this is because ever since uh, I've uh, had a baby girl, I think I've, um, you know, been a bit more interested in, how can I say, in, in the way um, women are sometimes sometimes portrayed in the media. Yeah. And that's that's how it was. Uh, that's how I started with that. Uh, but that's that podcast. The other one I listen to is uh, the coronavirus newscast because that's quite current right now. You know. Yeah. And so you're not. Uh, so you're on top of things. Avid follower of the BBC coverage, then. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I mean, but there are many others, but I'd say those are the ones that, at the moment, I'm listening to quite religiously. Yeah. That's a that's quite um that's quite a positive thing that you're doing there mm. to kind of like um for your daughter to kind of like get well versed in these um notable female figures mm. in history, yeah. but to have that deep look at who they actually were because it's it, it's the, very much the same as when you look at um, heroic male figures when you yeah. start going a little bit deeper. You know, yeah. they were like, oh, there's some questionable things there. There was some questionable behavior. Yeah. There was some sacrifices made. There was some, you know, uh, but, you know, the, the, the memory, the, the short form memory of those people are always very positive, extremely positive, yeah. you know. Um, so, yeah, it's that's that's quite good the way that you do that and everything. But well, it, it is it? because it. Yeah. No, no, no. Go on. I was going to say, like. It also makes you realize um, it, it, these little behaviors, like acquired behaviors, especially as a man, as you're growing up, you know, little comments you make about uh, uh, women like that, you always think is in good jest or things like that. And then all of a sudden you go, actually, that's 
that's not a good habit you've picked up over right. over time. So it's you just listen to you know I've listened to some of these podcasts and when I go, all right, I'll be doing less of that from now on. Okay, <laughs> kind of thing. right. Okay. You know, little things like that, for example. You know, How, is it um, the same? Is it the is it um, uh, just a, a a single host in it, or is there a team of? Uh, it's uh, on this one. You, you're wrong about it's two American um, journalists. One who writes for the Huffington Post, oh, right, and right. the other one who's a freelancer, but she's also an author. Okay. Like and um, yeah, they're, they're quite. You know, they're quite. Um, they're quite uh, zingy, quite quippy. No, it's, it's 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 quite fun to listen to them talk. That's probably the things here. Uh, this is probably the thing I like most about uh, podcasts. I mean. Uh, as you remember, I'm I'm someone who likes to talk a lot, you know, mm. and I like I enjoy listening to other people have intelligent, thought out conversations. Mm. I quite like being around. I've always said I'd rather be uh, the in a room full of surrounded by smart people, and I'm the dumbest one in the room because I feel oh. like you can learn so much. Massively, I th- I think that I think that a lot when I uh, actually interview people. <laughs> <laughs> just I, I'm just learning. I'm just kind of. I'm, I'm just going to get what you know, because um, I'm just fascinated. I mean, I think pub, the the kind of pub culture in the UK is one of the best examples for that. Because especially yeah. in little towns where we are, the characters that that I've come in contact with over the years has been brilliant. Like I was just, oh, wow, these people are amazing. You know, some of these some of these yeah. people are like the funniest people I've ever met. Um, mm-hmm. You know, some of the most reserved, some of the most witty. And it's just, but they're everyday people. And I think that everyday people is, everyone's got a story. Everyone's got something yeah. about them that, that is interesting, that is that is their thing, which is, you know, and, and I think with a podcast, I love having those long form conversations. I really do. I've mentioned yeah. this a, a bunch of times and, and with nearly mm-hmm. every one of my guests. And, um, and it's great. I mean, it, I think... Um, it's almost like it's almost like you want to give people that soapbox. Yeah. It, it, you know, you see a lot of podcasts and you kind of like, you know, you see the I'm a famous person because of this or I'm a person because of my business or because of my work mm-hmm. or because of that. And it's just like I was just kind of thinking with this one is just like, well, I just want to talk to people about what they would want to talk to you about at the pub. Or what they yeah. want to let you know about, or what they really want to—they're cutting loose, they're having a beer. What are we going to talk about? And and it just changes the whole framing yeah, of yeah. every conversation. It, it becomes really nice, and um, yeah, I, I just love it. I just love. Po- I mean, I've been into podcasts for. When was my first podcast? My first podcast must have been two thousand and seven. Oh wow! Really far back, yeah. Yeah, so two thousand and seven, and that was called the Giant Bomb. Um, podcast. Um, it was a mm-hmm. podcast set up by uh, Ryan Davis and um, Jeff Gersman. Uh, they are still going. They um, yeah. they had a. Uh, do you do you know the um, gaming site Gamespot? Gamespot dot com. I know of it. I haven't yeah. been on it. No. So Gamespot was massive. It was a, it was you know it still is, um, and it was like the major game thing. And they were two writers. Um, at GameSpot, um, mm-hmm. you know, kind of veteran writers and everything. And there was some kind of issue about um, Jeff um, giving a review to a game that had heavy sponsorship or something like that, a bad review. I think it was like, oh, God, I'm going to, I mean, I can't remember what the game was. It was something like yeah, a robbery gonna... game or something like that. And um, yeah, it will come to me. But anyway. Did it have two main characters in it? Yes. I think I know. Is it? I I know the one you mean. I think I know the one you mean. Actually, it was like yeah. It was it was like Kane a heist and, one, wasn't it? Yeah. Was, it like was a, one of them called Kane? Kane and might, yeah, know. might have been. Was it the? It wasn't um, Army of Two or something like that, was it? I'm not sure actually. Ka- yeah, one of them was Kane. Yeah, one of them was Kane. Yeah. So there was yeah. a, this is yeah. Look it up. I mean, I'll, I'll maybe put yeah. it put it uh, as a as a thing after. But yeah, so he gave a, uh, and you know, he got let go from GameSpot and then they went to San Francisco office with a few of their other writer friends and they just started in the basement of, um, and they just decided to start a podcast. 
they started this podcast yeah. and I was every week looking forward to it. And it was just a couple of guys talking about games for a couple of hours. They mm. used to spend the first, must have been the first 45 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, opening mail on the podcast. On the spot. Yeah, yeah. and then everybody was, everybody was um, sending them uh, snacks and energy drinks from around the world oh. and it was and it was just like try this energy like people were sending them like pickled onion monster munch um oh, you know oh. they were sending them what sits they were sending them like all of our snacks from oh, this is from the uk try this and then they were sending all these <laughs> horrible fucking energy drinks that they were and they were like oh god mm. and they were having all these energy drinks on but anyway they, 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 yeah yeah there's a main <laughs> But they, um, but yeah, the, that was the first one, and it's still going today. They they got bought by NBC in the end, I think, or CBS, oh, wow. or one of them. Yeah, good. Mm. It's amazing how it's grow. It's as a medium, it's growing so much year on year. Like it's, I, I've uh, because I've done research onto it for work as well. Just mm. um, the growth of podcasting as a medium, and uh, believe it's like, gosh, I'm gonna pull out a figure of thin out of thin air now. I think it's. Um, because I read it earlier. Yeah, they said like by 2023, approximately 1.8 billion people will be listening to podcasts. That's the projected figure. Yeah. That's... It yeah. is. And now the, the the sponsors have now got on it. So if you've got like 100,000 uh, viewers or something, yeah. then they're like, okay, we're now, we're now looking to put an ad on your podcast. Um, yeah, and we're podcast. interested. Yeah, yeah. And we're interested. But there's so many popping up. And it is, it's just like YouTube, isn't it? It's, it's the same kind of thing. It's, um, you know, the, nobody could have anticipated the growth in YouTube for the simple yeah. concept that it was of just like, you can upload your video. Can I? All right. All right. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> and, then, and then all of a sudden it's just like, wow, okay, well, this has become something. So now it's like, well, now you can upload an audio file. And then, yeah. you know, there's technology out there for you to actually have your own recording studio, which, you know, is what I'm sitting yeah. in at the moment. It's just it's just amazing the way it's gone. Um, and I think it's just going to yeah. keep growing. Trying to explain to the other generations, such as like my mother, <laughs> what, yeah. pod, what is a pod podcast? Pod? And the thing yeah. was, it's funny because I was still explaining that to people back in 2007 when mm. nobody really knew what podcasts were. And it's just yeah. like, yeah, it's still quite funny that that's that's the case. Yeah, but, but so no, no, it, it is. And you know what? It, it, like go, going back on touching on something you said earlier. I mean, the really the, the heartwarming quality of podcasting, I think, is that it gives that platform, like you said, for people to just talk about their passions. Mm. And you will find, guaranteed, you will find someone out there, if you know how to market your podcast, you know, uh, adequately, you will find someone going, oh my God, there's someone else out there who likes that thing that I like and they love talking about it mm. just as much as I do. Yeah. And you feel like, and that's the thing too, when I'm listening to um, these podcasts, the one I was telling you about, I feel like I'm there, sat in a room with my mates, listening yeah. to my mates talk. Absolutely. Um, it's that intimate a medium, I think, mm. you know. It is, and then, and a lot of the time the podcasts are just a bunch of mates talking. Um, some yeah, of the best yeah. ones I've listened to are are just a couple of friends. I think the other the other part of it as well is that the person that's producing the podcast, um, mm -hmm. it's theirs, it's theirs, yeah. it, it's theirs. There's you know, you can put, you know, you can have endorsements if you choose to have endorsements, obviously. Mm -hmm. I would probably say that if you ever had any endorsements, make sure it's a product that you would buy yourself. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. The other thing is, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, okay, well, say, for example, um, a person wanted to come, a very famous person wanted to come mm -hmm. onto somebody's podcast and yeah. wanted to talk about, you know, their latest, if they're a musician, latest single or something like that. Now, if you were a chat show host or a TV host, you'd have them on. No matter what, you'd have yeah. them on. They'd come on and you'd go like that. And you'd sit there and, you know, um, you know, if, if my, my interest is like 1940s jazz, I'd have to kind of interview Justin Bieber about his latest collaboration with Skrillex. And it's just like I could probably tell the host wasn't really going to be that interested in it um, yeah, yeah. because they've not, they're not kind of deep in it. When you get podcasts where the host 
is like I really wanted to speak to you. They really do want to speak to someone. Yes, exactly. About it. Well, you know, it's it's not in if if done properly, it's not scripted. It's no. a natural it like I said, it's a free flowing conversation. Whereas whenever I as much as, you know, I mean Graham Norton and Jonathan Ross, you know, and they're really good at what they do, but the you have no doubt that you under no illusion that they're not following some scripts that they have, you know, yeah. that they've had to rehearse beforehand, you know, I'm saying like, at least if not a, a script, but at least some guidelines. Whereas yeah. like you said, I mean, podca- a conversation on podcasts very often can go off on all sorts of tangents, which mm. you didn't know it was possible to go off on, but they end up talking about something that's really, really interesting and interesting to them. I always say that if someone, if, if someone's passionate about something, it rubs off on other people. It does. Yeah. And it becomes infectious when you're listening yeah, to yeah. it, the amount of times I've actually listened to podcasts where I've just have no idea what this person's talking about, but the way that they're talking about it, I'm like, I'm in because I'm no, I yeah, really like am, um, kind of like, yeah, yeah I'm engaged. I mean, get as a good, yeah. I'm engaged. You got yeah, to get engaged. engaged. I do think that the chat shows, um, TV produced, uh, radio as well. You got to remember that conventional radio is still out there. Of course, yeah, yeah. But they are kind of tied into almost the same kind of formats of like, right, we do this, then we play music, then we got a word from our advert, yeah. then we got this, then we got that, and they kind of have to kind of structure it. We're going to get you to play this game that we play with every celebrity here. It's almost like kind of stick celebrity here. And you can yeah, really, exactly. yeah, you can really kind of uh, insert, that's a better word, insert celebrity here. Um, but you can really kind of get a sense um, when the interviewer is really into it. Like I think, yeah. um, I think it's Scott Mills. Scott Mills has done, um, I think Will Farrell has been on Scott Mills a couple of times. And yeah. you can always tell that Scott Mills is so happy to have him there because he finds yeah, him so yeah. incredibly funny. He's an amazingly yeah. funny guy anyway. Have you ever heard The Nerdist? Did you ever listen to The Nerdist podcast? Yes, I have actually. I have mm. listened to The Nerdist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Nerdist is very good. The Nerdist yeah. um, is great because it's not The Nerdist anymore, by the way. Um, the, yeah, he, it's got a different name now. What is- ID10T. T- ID T. Oh, right. I D ten T, yeah. So the guy yeah. that 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 made it, I'm, uh, excuse me, I'm I'm going to be totally stupid and not actually remember his name, but he's a well respected podcaster, and uh, I, I feel bad. Yeah, I don't yeah. know, but um, he sold the Nerdist franchise or the Nerdist name to um, a, you know, a bigger company, and then he right. went off and did his own uh, podcast, and he called it I D ten T. If you actually write I D ten T, it says idiot. Right, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he started doing that. But right. I mean, yes. but, but he was he was um, uh, he worked very closely with Will Farrell um, on Will Farrell's oh, production, right, yeah. and uh, he worked for Gary Gary Sanchez. Is it Gary Sanchez yes. Productions? And if you ever, um, I've got some of them on there. You should really go and see uh, if you can uh, listen to some of the ones with Will Farrell. Because they're, because they're just sitting there talking absolute rubbish and they're just oh. laughing at each other's presence. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, oh, no, no. And, uh, those so are those the best. Are ones. Oh, they're you, you know what's a similar... Actually, this is another podcast I, I listen to. Unfortunately, it seems to have been uh, uh, ceased production for a time being for some reason. But um, you're familiar with Russell Kane, right? Yeah. The comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He had, he's got one excellent podcast called Evil or Genius, which mm. basically they take a historical figure and they say, uh, it's him and a panel, and they say, yeah. right, let's take Mother Teresa. Was she evil or was she a genius? And oh, the, okay. and uh, tries to unearth facts about them, some very positive, some surprisingly negative, or oh, the right. other way around. Oh, right. They take, I don't know, Ma- uh, Margaret Thatcher or whatever, and they say, they get the ones where, you know, the, the people are quite familiar with, yeah. you know, boohoo. Like that. And then actually they unearth something else, which is remarkably positive about it. And at the end, they have to decide, was this person evil or a genius? So that's, that one's still ongoing. And that that's one's a also a really good one I listened to. But the other one, which I r- listened to quite religiously for a while, and he hasn't done any new episodes since March last year, is um, Boys Don't Cry. Okay. It's about uh, men and mental health. Oh, right. So okay. what, 
what he does is he has um, he has two guests, uh, two male guests and a female guest, mm-hmm. and him and the other two male guests will talk about uh, an issue you know affecting men, and um, and he says and I have the female guest who is the the lady auditor, mm. so uh, she's there in case if ever the, the conversation goes off on a. A slightly chauvinistic tangent. She's had to go. Hang on, hang on a second, like that. Yeah. You know? And to give also the female perspective on these issues that affect men. And Russell Kane, you know, I've got a lot of uh, respect for the man. He's uh, not. He's not just very funny, uh, but he, you know, he's he's got some. He's very surprisingly insightful. I'd say uh, I wasn't expecting him to be that uh, emotionally intelligent. Let's say. You yeah. Know? He's like very very sensitive to issues are all like he'll bring up a little uh i don't know a little nuance or a little uh behave like i said acquired behavior of men and you kind of stop and go in the car bloody hell i always do that or i always yeah. feel like that you know and yeah. i've never talked about it and so it was, yeah. it was it's an excellent it, it was an excellent podcast and i highly recommend you to listen to that it's a, it's a shame it stopped for the time being i don't yeah. know why well he um yeah. uh well that's it might be because of the coronavirus and things getting people together that is too, not yes. <laughs> but um yeah. he used to he used to put elements of that into his stand up so when mm. he was so he's yeah. kind of clean he's kind of cleaned clean bbc now because he used to uh kind of jump around on stage uh very camply looking like um uh you know um russell brand's love child um, yeah and uh, and um and and like, kind of, like it. yeah and that was it and he i think it was ele- was it bbc electric theater was the um uh, i think so yeah, yeah. and that was a, that was a really good kind of way of actually um showcasing talent i really enjoyed it it was some i think joe um oh god i'm really rubbish with names at the moment i'm i'm totally i'm totally uh i'm totally rubbish uh it was the the chap out of um countdown uh uh, eight out of ten cats does countdown. Joe, <gasps> okay. Joe. You, you put me on the spot. I'm, I'm being Joe. rubbish with names Joe. too now. <laughs> no, I don't know. Okay, all right. So Joe, big beard. Yeah, good. I, all I've got yeah, in yeah. my head is Joe Lyson, but it's not him because it's because yeah. um, <laughs> he was just on the telly a minute ago. But anyway, yeah. he was on there. Um, Nick Helm was also. Um, did one of his first performances on there. Oh, I think Nick Helm is amazing. He's so funny. He's yeah. aggressively funny. Um, yeah. And he hasn't, and I think he he caught, sort of abandoned that a little bit for his BBC Three show. And I think that was a bit of a mistake because I think if he just kept with that kind of raw, almost like a kind of a, a damaged wedding singer, act that he had it was it was brilliant it was really i was really i was really enjoying it it was like you know it was it was quite aggressive and it was and it was very good but um yeah that was that was all on there and and um russell kane he he mentioned about um relationships breaking down and and uh he had trouble with things and i think he i think he went through it a little bit um he did He, he, he talks about and i like the term because you know it's it's one which, you know, it's quite apt. Um, he talks about man rage a lot, mm-hmm. you know. And, uh, man you know, rage. He's saying that man rage, you know. He said that ability for men to get very, like, incandescently uh, angry at times, you know, when they're frustrated. And he says he believes, and I completely agree with this, uh, it's because a lot of men repress so much. Mm-hmm. They, re- they don't articulate or they're either because they're not able to or because they're afraid to. They do not articulate what they're processing, what emotions they're feeling. They bottle it all up, they repress it, and then how and then it manifests in yeah. these bursts of rage. Bursts, and this yeah. need to uh sometimes punch a wall, you know what mm. I mean? Hopefully yeah. just a wall, you know? <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. So, and and again, yeah. you know, this is this goes back to, you know, uh, I'm I'm very much interested in how people take the edge off of that kind of thing, and it is yeah. for 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 men, it's very much hobbies, you know. I think hobbies. Yeah. I mean, hobbies aren't exclusive to men. I'm not stupid, but no. they are the most prone to 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 having them. You know, you know, you'll you'll probably meet more men that have hobbies 
than you will we, we, women and that's not saying anything detrimental or anything oh well all women have have hobbies and it's well not necessarily I, I know that nearly every man will have a hobby nearly everyone I will think, have that escape yeah. because we're very much escapist creatures um i do think it's also a, it's also got to do with the fact that women tend to have very heart to heart um relationships with their female friends Whereas I think a lot of men tend to have shoulder to shoulder relationships, yeah. meaning, oh, let's go out to the pub together, you know, and they're yeah. sat next to each other at the bar, or, they, or they'll go together to the cinema, or they'll go together and play golf, or things yeah. like that. You know, I, I think, and a ve- or, you see, that's or e- to I think that's equally, match. yeah, I think that's equally beneficial. So, for example, well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, um, two uh, uh, two close um, women friends would probably most likely go out share a bottle of wine if they drink share a bottle of water whatever um and um and actually talk directly about the things that are bothering them and air yeah, them yeah. and actually open up to each other quite happily men do do that but they sort of do it a lot of men do it in an unspoken way like yeah, um exactly. Uh, it's like I'm having a hard time at the moment. All oh, right, come on. Do you want to come down football? And then we'll just talk. And and you, it will just be in. The, and then after that, you won't have talked about any of your problems or anything. But you've been with your friends. You've had a laugh. You've had it. And it's just like, oh, mm-hmm. I really needed that. It was really good. Cheers, man. Yeah. And everything like that. And that's it. And that and that's kind of like you can actually still get the same sort sort of relief, the same sort yeah. of kind of airing from different things. Exercise, another one. Exercise yeah. is a great way to Look actually it do it as yeah. well. Yeah. Physically punishing yourself um, <laughs> or, or trying to yeah. achieve something. I yeah. think that's that's the other thing. It's it's the achieve. It's not the. It's it's not so much the the problem. It's the sum of its parts. Um, mm-hmm. And I think, I mean, my own my own uh, experience of it is that if you think about the big pitch of the big problem and everything like that, it, it just crushes mm-hmm. you. It, the weight yeah. of it, it's like they said, Oh, you yeah. got the, you know, the weight of the world on your shoulders. It's right. If you think about all the big problems and everything, then you just go and you just don't move because you just, like, I can't, yeah. I can't move forward. But then if you break that into small parts and just think, right, what yeah. can I do towards this today? What can I just do now today? What can I do now? Oh, I can get up. That's a good one. Oh, I can go get showered. Oh, I can go do this. Okay. I can maybe look at the paperwork that I need to for that. Or I maybe and just break it down yeah. into pieces, but don't Small think increments. about it. I've said this so many times, but some of the best advice I ever had um, about mm-hmm. coping with anxiety and, um, and problems and things like that. And it was said to me by a counsellor, of which I've said to many people early times, is that if... Um, you are just thinking about what's going to happen in the future. If you've got one foot in the future, one foot in the past, you're pissing all over now. That's a very, very graphic, but quite spot on way of putting it. Yeah. It's a very manly way of putting it, uh, I guess, but, but it's the one that it's (laughs) in my stupid, in my mental brain. It's one of the, one of the things that resonated with me more than anything else. I still, to this day, just go, as soon as things go like that, I'm like, oh, da, da, da. Mm. Right, hold on, what's, what's happening now? What's happening now? Just now. Okay, right, let's yeah. just not, let's not piss all over now. Let's just sort out now and then, uh, and then we'll move forward. Was it easy for you to decide to go see someone? Um, no, very mm. much not. It was, uh, it was, um, it was at a point where it was very um, embarrassing. Um, mm-hmm. It was very, um, yeah, it was very disarming. Um, and, you know, you didn't think you should be there. You thought that um, yeah. other people went there, not you. Other people yes. go to these people, not you. Yeah, that's a, that's a very, very good way to put that because... Um, uh, that's how I felt too before mm. I made the decision to go to go to see someone. Mm. So, yeah, I think it's more common now. Uh, I I mean I've I've spoken to again through this, which has been a real surprising um, mm. side effect 
you know, kind of a side thing. I never, I never thought that, you know, I thought we were just going to talk about, you know, what people want to talk about, like, you know, their interests and stuff like that. But, yeah, you know, I've had, I've had a few people on here talk about, you know, their, their struggles with, you know, their own kind of mental things. I, you know, um, Ali was the first one that, that kind of talked about it. Uh, yeah. And then since then I've had people and like you've mentioned and stuff and it's just, it's 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 good it's a very good thing that people talk about this um yeah. and and like yeah it's just it really it did help it did help but it was very hard i think the help is different for everybody if you yeah. know what i mean so the thing it did for me is probably different to what it did for you or the way that i perceived how it helped yeah. was probably different to you i i thought of it as a, a sounding board so i yeah. could hear myself talking mm-hmm. saying things and the only time i was challenged because he was just listening i was just offloading and he was listening because i i'm like you i like to talk so much mm-hmm. um and the minute that i wasn't being congruent or i was saying things that really didn't mix with other things i'd said and were sort of contradictory He'd actually just yeah. say, "Do you really think that? Do you uh, really yeah. think that?" Yeah. And it made me go, mm-hmm. "I don't know. Do I? No. Do I really think that? That does doesn't make sense. That doesn't sound like the way I think." And then it kind of yeah, oh. and that was it really. I mean, some of the sessions were just like Bleh, like that, and yeah, then, and that was yeah. it. It wasn't like he ever told me what to do. Mm-hmm. And gave me some ways of thinking about things. But, you know, at the end of it, it's just, you know, you've got to work it out yourself. It's your head. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, for me, it was um, it was quite an interesting process because um, uh, I basically, you know, starting from the end, I clearly suffer from anxiety, uh, like a lot of people do. Uh, but f- my case, it you know, it runs in the family. Right. And uh And I always thought, you know, like, oh, it affects the rest of the family. It doesn't affect me. Like you said, other people go to therapy, not me. Other people do, not you. You've got this. And also, it wasn't wasn't necessarily because I didn't believe in the merits of psychology or therapy and things like that. I just thought, uh, thinking to myself, I thought, you're quite emotionally literate. You've got a good handle on your emotions. Yeah. You don't need a therapist. You can figure it out yourself, you know? And uh, no, I just, I went through, I started going through a phase where I'd feel I'd get um, privately angry very, very quickly. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't be openly angry with people, things like that. I would just feel this shortness of breath and I'd feel this, um, it was like a knot in my chest, mm. like tightening up tighter and tighter. And you reach a point where you need to let, you need, um, you know, an outlet. And the the very sad truth of the matter is in these cases with, um, you know, I, we're talking about men right now, but I'm sure it's like that for, for, for women too. But mm. uh, the point is, you don't want to be an arsehole to your children because you want them to look up to you. You don't want to be an arsehole with your friends because you want them to like you, mm. you know, and you don't want, and you don't want to be an arsehole at work because your job description demands it, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So who do you end up projecting your anger onto? Sometimes it's going to be a partner, mm. which is, and it's so unfair because you end up punishing the person you need the most, mm. you know, in those moments. And I think it was around that time that I sort of realized this was uh, two, three, two years ago. Yeah. And it was uh, back end of 2018. I thought, Oh, you know what? I feel like I'm having this pent up anger, things like that. Mm. And, and I would, when I would eventually have an outburst, I would feel physically exhausted afterwards. So you'd like snap, would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you know, yeah, like Russell Clinton, I've punched a few walls, you know, Mm. and you feel like an idiot straight after doing it. You know, (laughs) you can almost, you have this dissociative experience where it's almost like you leave your body and you see yourself 
getting angry and waving your arms around and then punching a the wall and you just first saying like what are you doing mate like that and i think that's when i realized you know it's probably time to go talk uh talk to talk to someone about it so was it i mean what, you, what was the what was the tr- kind of trigger for it though like was there kind of like was it stress of work you know you're expanding family your it, commitments was it house was it um, what, what was it well i can put it this way um it was it just a turn- general it was just a general it's life like it's yeah just, i mean it's just I, life I, and I, getting older how old are you now I'm now. I'm gonna turn 34 this year. You're just a young pup. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just a young pup. Oh, well, it's good to get this. No, well, it's good to get these tools now, man. Because I wish I had yeah, them at that absolutely, age. Absolutely. I wish I had them at that age. Because I, you know, well, I'm, I'm a bit older than you. I'm 42 this year, so it's. Uh, I'm getting on. You don't look a day past 41, so. Oh, worry. mate, excellent! I love that. I'll take that one. Uh, That's on record, man. <laughs> well, it's, um, but no, like, answering your question though, um, I thought at the time, and there, here's this coincided with the birth of my daughter. Yeah. Shortly after my daughter, I I could feel myself being less patient with with her needs and things like that than I was with my son three years previously. Oh right. And yeah. and you start and. In your mind, you start feeling guilty then for, yeah. feel it, for feeling that way. So yeah. you're like beating yourself up over and over again inside, yeah. and that just creates that. And uh, so I thought, oh, I'm going to go to therapist because I've got anger management issues and things yeah. like that. Uh, after many a session, uh, I, you know, realized it was something, something much deeper, and it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 it's somehow rooted in low self-esteem. You know, okay. where you. St- you know, where you, you know, you kind of say, I don't hate myself, but I don't have that big and that high an opinion of myself either kind of thing. Or yeah. you think, oh, I could be better. And you, and that's, that's really what it is. You came saying you're all right, but you could be better. And why yeah. aren't you better? Why aren't you better at being a dad? Why aren't you better at your job? Why aren't you better at being a husband and things like that. Yeah. So, you know, so you have, so, and then that's what's going on in your head and you just uh, punish yourself repeatedly, you know? So yeah, it's it's uh, but you know what? Talking about it helps. Yeah, uh, and that that is it. Um, I think getting through some of it was contact with, you know, friends, family, things like that. Yeah, it's just it it's it's difficult because it's kind of like you know you go a bit um, you kind of like it's difficult because I don't know my own personality is normally when someone tells me a problem. I immediately want to solve it for them or I want to oh, give it's them, such a man thing. Isn't yeah. It? I want to kind of like, <laughs> well, we can do this to get it. Yeah. Well, if you do this now and do that, yeah. but then, you know, when you're really deep into your emotions, when you're really deep into it, you don't mm-hmm. want someone to just come out and solve the problem because you know, it's in your head, it's unsolvable. Um, you just want someone to help you get over this and find mm. your own way. And, and it's yeah. quite, you know, I mean, I think, uh, I think women have got this down because they're so emotionally connected, um, mm. far more than men uh, go out a limb and yeah. say that they are so much more emotionally sensitive, um, and connected with their own kind of like head. Um, they're more tactile too, if you think about it, a lot of, a lot of women like to, you know, they'll hug it out a lot easier and a lot more frequently than men, I think. The inhibitions, you know? yeah. I mean, the inhibitions are yeah. very low. But then again, self-esteem, I think every human being has got self-esteem issues. I think everybody has. Yeah. And, you know, you could look at the most confident person on earth. You know, you could look at sports stars and things like that. And you think, wow, you must be walking on air. They've got it all figured out. And, yeah, then, yeah. They, and then you kind of, they, they kind of like, you know, privately to their friends or publicly sometimes, they kind of come out and they're just a wreck. And they're dead because yeah. they're human. They're human. Of course they're human. You know, they're, they've got the same problems of us. Sometimes it's magnified because, you know, they're on much oh, yeah, higher, yeah. They're, they're on a bigger uh, microscope. You know, they're, they're kind of like, you know, they're really being looked at. Their privacy is, you know, everything they do, everything, you know, it goes back to the kind of the, 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 the way that social media and the way that the keyboard warrior generation is, is now... Yeah. chosen to attack certain people and chosen to attack like certain themes and things like that and it's just like okay i do i do kind of understand there must be an opposition 
Okay, yeah. because it would be really boring world if everybody just went, yep, yep, okay, you do you, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you do need to challenge certain ideas. You do need to challenge things because you know what? Not every idea is gold and not every idea no. should be passed through. So sometimes you do need to challenge things. But, you know, challenging for the sake of challenging things, I think that's oh, the... Oh, no. Yeah, that's, the, that's the kind of... Yeah, and also, you know, does it really matter? You know, does it does it really no, matter? No. Is it national, you can pa- national it news? Sometimes, can't you? you can sometimes tell when someone's just being uh, disruptive for the sake of disruption, not because they genuinely have an issue or a position on this topic or whatever you're discussing mm. you know but that's, i do think sometimes you, you you get those people as well you you do and but the, you know i wouldn't take away the platforms i wouldn't take away the platforms oh, no, no. i really no. wouldn't i wouldn't um you know the twitters the well would i take away instagram i don't know there'd be slightly less naked people on on the uh, on phones everywhere but uh i don't know instagram's fun instagram's a great <laughs> uh, uh you know instagram um i think everything everything that's popular is going to be used in certain ways that is kind yeah. of a little bit maybe a little bit dodgy um but the platforms it would never take away the platforms because the platforms again like this this platform mm. this is a platform this is a soapbox this is giving people that i'm really interested in and people that yeah. are, you know I want to talk to, it's giving me not only an excuse to talk to them, but it's also making them. It's like you know, Ricky Gervais says in Afterlife, um, you know, everybody should be in the local paper yeah. at least once. And yeah. I think that's right. I think everybody should be on a podcast at least once. I think someone should give the opportunity to tell their story at least Absolutely, once. Absolutely, yeah. And um, oh. and that's quite a. It's quite a powerful, empowering piece of technology that that we've um that we've got as a human race at the moment so it could be used yeah, for yeah. good could be used for evil everything can oh everything absolutely can. you know yeah. a gun a gun to be used to protect a gun to be used to attack you know it's mm-hmm. it's it's got lots of different things but there you go so we were talking yeah yesterday when we did a little dry run yeah. favorite man cave episodes you know what i said yesterday i I mentioned a couple but actually i remembered you know what was probably the one i had the most genuine fun doing was the comic on one yeah do you know what i still get people comment on that one i still get people saying i really like that comic on one i said i wish i wish we could keep doing it that's so cool and they and for a second i had some people some because i grew up in italy i had uh, had some friends from back home going my God, your your podcast was invited to Comic Con, and I just went, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was invited to Comic Con. <laughs> that was I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, we did the little interview with Maddie, didn't we as well? Um, and um, I shot all of it on my. <laughs> I shot all of it on a. On a I tell you what, selfie, about- selfie stick. I didn't even have a gimbal. I've got a gimbal now, and I could yeah. actually film nice shots and everything if i really wanted yeah. to but um i would love to do that again we should man i mean oh, yeah. when, I, when I, they I, open those you know things what? i'd love to do that with um gosh when my kids when they're a bit old enough you know because they are you know they've whether they like it or not they've been indoctrinated in the ways of marvel yeah and uh you know so i don't know like, i think i think nolan would be look pretty amazing in a uh in a in a mini jedi robe Oh, I haven't quite gotten Star Wars yet. I mean, he he's aware of Star Wars. He's not quite. He hasn't bought into it as much as he has with Marvel. Yeah, he he's got like four different Avengers costumes, and he can name everybody characters which other kids have no idea exist. I I just love that. I love that um, video that you posted on Facebook. Is one of my favorite videos where you just say Nolan. Who's this? And you get this this um, cartoon yes. Marvel book out, yeah. and he word for word picks. And he wanted to do that. It's Brilliant. so it's so. I I swear to God, it, people sometimes say, "Come, Michael, you do labour it a bit." You know, <laughs> you didn't make it do that. I said, "Honest to God," he says, "Daddy, I want to do a clip," 
and then yeah. he goes and that's what happened even then you know, he's a like super that. cool kid super cool kid and he, oh, he could be the next Thor I think not he not good yeah he, not, he has not, to just uh, let yeah ball. not Jane Foster but ball. he could be he could definitely he's, he's got a Thor look to him he could definitely swing a hammer that kid um, he, he's he's a he's a chunky boy. He's quite he's quite he's like he's a little he's rugby got fair player. hair he's got, as well. He's got yeah, fair yeah. hair as well. So yeah. well, that's his European lineage. Well, he's well two European lineage, yeah. lineage isn't yeah. it? So German. No, that that was a really fun one. I'd love to go back. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna be posting a lot of um, yeah uh, kind of archive stuff yeah putting it to the front again and kind of like saying right you know maybe making audio versions of it as well um i think that one probably won't work as well on an audio version i might do a remastered strong visual components to that there is just i I, I might do i might take the footage and do a remastered i might because i've actually i don't know i I think i did it on movie maker originally which at the time was the only thing i knew how to use Um, yeah i've done nowhere near but what a day that was! Just the, the the whole experience, the fact that um, you know, it was it was just it was the closest we had to San Diego Comic Con, you know, experience here in London. You know, it was and, huge. Uh, yeah, apparently was, the one in May is or oh, March. The one in March or May is it March or May that is even better. Like, there's more cosplayers yes. than the winter one. Yeah. It is. It's just purely because it's warmer, so people venture. People venture out, and more people venture out in costumes. Mm. You know. So no, no, that that was a great one. Uh, what else? Yeah, to, like uh, logging in when I, while I was in abroad in Germany was quite cool. Um, I liked also when we did when we live streamed when we test when we played the beta version of that game. I don't remember what it was now. Was it um, For Honor? For Honor, yeah. The, which they've made free to play now. And apparently it's yeah. a half decent game with kind of. Um, is it now? Okay. It is, yeah. <laughs> but I've not, I've not gone back to it. But they, but they yeah, they, they did the usual thing. I think it was, was it Ubisoft? Did the usual thing of release a game that wasn't very, that didn't do very well. And then they just patch and patch and patch until they make yeah. it a decent game again. They did that with the division. They did that with the division um as well yeah. and, and they have the assassin's to creed curse isn't it yeah yeah but the new assassin creed looks amazing have you seen it uh valhalla mm. the viking one yeah, yeah. Looks uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you this um i'm i'm a bit of a history nut so assassin's creed for me has always been a bit like a, a bit of a, a cheap date i'm like yeah. you know what i just feel like playing it i know i it's going to be the same formula i'll just go go for it again but the last one odyssey the one in ancient greece oh, was that good i thought it was surprisingly yeah. good i thought yeah, they yeah. said that they said that that's got like almost kind of witcher-esque um like landscapes Scope. to it yeah yes like the whole kind yeah, of yeah yeah gosh see still haven't finished it i can go yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I absolutely. I love those it's, games. Um, it's almost endless, you know, like it, to the point where I, I just had to stop playing because I was like, I could be here for days, you know, mm. <laughs> so I just, I just stopped. But it's great when you get lost in that. I mean, The Witcher 3 for me yeah. was was a, a good one. Do you know the last game that I really got lost in? It? I mean, it's it is um, the, the God of War on PS4. Um, that, yeah. Did you, you, did you play that? Yeah. Um, yeah, Andy lent it to me. So good. Story it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, um, <laughs> so Andy took it as an insult. I didn't, I didn't, uh, as an insult to the game, I really didn't mean it that way. I was playing the, um, you know, story mode, and then I just said, oh, it's ended. <laughs> so oh, I, was really? like, I was expected to just keep on going and going and going and going. I mean, at some point, you know, I see end credits. Yeah. Come up, and I'm like, oh, oh, it's, it's the end. Yeah. <laughs> God, I was quite quite surprised. I was, like, I was ready to carry on for a bit longer than that. Um, you know? I'm trying to think of. Um, I'm trying to think. You can. No, you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can. But, there's there's yeah. two more. There's two more. Like Nilfgaard, I think it is. And there's there's yeah. two more worlds that you can access afterwards. I yeah. I actually I did that. I got everything. Yeah. And then I went back and I new game plus it. So I took all my stuff with me. Went to New Game yeah. Plus and put it on Give Me War mode. Whoa, oh, wow. that's some. I mean, I'm I'm halfway through, I think, or I'm a little way through, 
that is yeah. challenge that is a challenge but i love i mean i love the combat in it um i love the story oh and, it's, and it's, i went it's back the boss battles for me which yeah, i'm battles. like when, whenever i whenever you beat a boss on god of war you feel godlike yeah. it's, it's it did bad. yeah it's you bad. kind of like you bring down <laughs> yeah you bring down um the, the big guys and everything um yeah. boulder wasn't it boulder was the the main protagonist in it wasn't it was, yeah and you get yeah, thor yeah. as well well not thor you get his, his well his, his kids he's yeah that's what he was, he was, he was Modi and Modi. i don't know <laughs> i feel like that yeah. Modi, yeah. but you know what i'm playing at the moment i'm playing um star wars uh fallen order i was literally talking about that with andy the other day is it worth buying it yes yes mm -hmm. oh, yep you paused for a second yeah <laughs> Do you know why? Because I did originally didn't like it. Um, okay. I, didn't, I didn't like it. So the it's had its technical issues. It has got its technical issues, and that does let it down with the immersion. So you know how in God of War everything's very solid. Everything's very yeah. solid. All the characters are very solid. The scenery, you know. Now, in Jedi Order, it's like you'll be standing somewhere and your lightsaber's like through the scenery. Ah, uh, right. I hate that. Then or, yeah. or you'll get hit and then all of a sudden like half of his body's in the floor and then half of it's not. I just think yeah, that so with an EA triple A game, that's not yeah. really, and you'll get bugs and you'll get that. The, the thing was that I kind of approached it. I was like, I'm not too sure about this. I've had to, I'm playing it on PC and I've, I've, I've had to lower a lot of the graphic settings because there's so many little bugs in it where it's kind of freezes and all this. And apparently the console version that drops frames and stuff, which in a, um, uh, in a game with the combat it is, dropping frames is not helpful. It's really not, yeah. which is a shame because it's, it's, it's got the, it's like every. It's like most. It's like the other Star Wars games that EA brought out, like Battlefront Two. You know, they kind of. It, they finally got it right, but it took quite a long time to get there. Yeah. Um, and um, so I entered it thinking this is Force Unleashed. Yeah. Oh, well, this is Force Unleashed. Brilliant. Oh, Force Unleashed. Here we go. Da -da -da. First, uh, dead. Okay, dead. Well, there's only two baddies there. Dead. And I was like, I was like, this isn't fun. And I was getting. Is it that really, difficult? It's that difficult. It is really that difficult. Oh. So, have you ever played Dark Souls or Bloodborne? I have not been purely because I know how how it's legendary how how difficult oh, those games. Are. Yeah. So yeah. that that's what they've modeled the game on. No, if you know oh. that, you understand yeah. where it is. How so, bloody difficult. It yeah. Is so, be. like yeah. you. If you get hit about three times from an enemy without getting a stim or, or anything like that, you'll die. Um, you have to, every time you have an enemy, you can't just go, right, force, get them, slash this. Da, 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 da. Right. You have yeah. to look at them and go, right, so he's going to attack me there. They're going to shoot me from afar. Um, I can do this. I can parry. Where can I escape to? but you've got to chill. As soon as you're in a thing, like when you're in a battle, put your guard up and you've got to chill. You've got to react to what they're going to do. You can't kind yeah. of, can't just go in there guns blazing. And then when you, right, pull, yeah. when you pull it off, you feel godlike. You really oh, do. Kind of you pull yeah. it off, you kind of like, you get everything right. You just go like, right, okay, ping, ping, ping. Those, those guys are dead. Block that attack take this guy out, take that guy out, parry, did it. And then when you kind of do it and you've got a full bar of health, he just goes like that. And then he puts his lightsaber away and you go, that was pretty yes. cool. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to um, watch a lot of YouTube videos before to say like okay. how to, you know, things you must know about the combat, things you must know about the combat. If you go in with that, mentality you'll enjoy it a lot more the story's brilliant the story's better than any of the films i'm gonna be honest the characters oh, right. at first i thought i'm not gonna i don't really understand why they've made this jedi like this they're actually quite endearing and they're they're quite you know they're i, I quite find i find them quite um quite nice and it just mm -hmm. opens up the world again you know you're kind of in this yeah 
post order 66 world yeah and yeah. the empire is basically on top of the world at the moment and and you know you're 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 touching on all these worlds that you haven't really explored very much like you explore kashik um yeah. and, and stuff like that and you kind of like get into the real deep areas of kashik and and it's like that it's like the planet out of avatar it's like oh, right. yeah not- it is it's got it's got a big tree and everything and uh, and uh, so yeah it's it's really good i would i would say it's what is it it's about 20 22 i think now it's about 22 pounds maybe 25 pounds yeah um, it, I'll t- I'll, it will I'll go tell down. you the, the reason why it's on my radar is because i am itching to buy the last of us part two. Oh yeah yeah of course yeah. and I was having a discussion with our friend Andy and he said, but Mike, are you really going to pay £53 for a game that's just come out? And I thought to myself, what other game can I get that can distract me for a while from yeah. buying The Last of Us Part yeah. 2? And I thought you know, Fallen Order could, would be that. Yeah, I mean, and also the um, uh, you'd get it on PS4, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. Um, they've just... The other on May the fourth, they released a uh, free DLC for it, which not only oh, patched okay. a bunch of it, but they put new game modes in it. They put new game plus, and they've changed the game again. They've they've listened to fans and they've put see classic EA. They 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 go oh yeah we released this, fans go well you should have put this in it you should have put that bit and they've actually listened and they've actually put some of the stuff mm-hmm. in. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm quite disappointed because I'm playing on PC at the moment. I'm not getting the updates, and uh, and I really want to play those other other modes. Um, so yeah, I would I I'd recommend it. I would say yes, definitely go for it. Um, learn how the combat works, and also um, other tip: it's not a combat game. It's an exploration game. It's about right. exploration with bits of combat. It's not yeah. about combat. It, it cool. you know. So if you approach it, whereas the idea is to find everything, then mm-hmm. you'll go along better because it's a very short storyline. If you right, play okay. it, yeah. If you play it just straight storyline, it is quite short. Um, right. But if you actually go, okay, now it's telling me to go to this planet. But before I do, I've noticed I've got another Jedi power. Maybe if can I get through this door that I couldn't get through? And then you go back on yourself. Because otherwise, if you you get through quite a lot of the game, then you end up backtracking all the way. I make yeah. sure that I, with the new powers I've got and the new stuff I've unlocked, I stay on that planet until I've exhausted all means. And then uh-huh. I move to the other planet. And I found that really enjoyable. So, yeah. There's, yeah. Um, so that's the way that you should play it. So, yeah, it'd be interesting I'll to see. keep that on. in mind, yeah. Yeah, but there you go. There's an advert for Jedi Order. <laughs> yeah. We're not sponsored by Jedi Order, but there you go. Fallen no, Order. Fallen. Oh, gosh, no. Yeah. If only. <laughs> sponsored by Yeah, yeah. some EA sponsor money. That would be nice. But so, oh. so, you're, so you're just deep into the podcast. Are we still into the comic books? You're still collecting? I am, yeah. Uh, all Almost exclusively on my Kindle now. Yeah. It's just I'm my shelf's not big enough, basically. Comicsology. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, comicsology no, is uh, mine. Sorry, comicsology. That's oh, comicsology. Right. I just, Amazon. I just get them off, um, off uh, Amazon um, Prime every once in a while. Get them at a fraction of the cost of. Um, um, well, comicsology is uh, Amazon. It is. It's just the same. It's the same company. Oh right, okay. It's just linked. Yeah. It's just linked. But the thing is, with yeah. comicsology, if you actually, you know, you can link the two accounts. Because they own yeah. Comixology anyway, but they give away so much. I've got so many free. I keep sending you links. So many free ones, like you yeah, know, first yeah. of this series, first of that series. Loads of free ones on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm still no, still uh, still love a good comic. Uh, it's uh, that's still uh, offers uh, brilliant escapism. We were talking about escapism earlier. Still think comics are brilliant. You know, I always feel like. Um, uh, whenever you're having a bit of a doubt, like a feeling low on a day, read mm. a good comic, and you you know you leave away going like you know what if 
Spider-Man or Thor can save the day, then you can get through today. You know, like you know, like that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it sounds silly, but it it does help, I think. Um, and you know, just the quality of writing is uh, on some of them is really really good. Um, uh, when we were doing our pod, the podcast a few years ago, I I said back then I was making a conscious decision to steer away steer away from marvel and dc a bit and explore other comics out there well now it's the opposite i've gone right. back to marvel reading Maybe. a lot more a lot more marvel and there's some titles which i never thought i'd enjoy which right now have become my favorite titles which is fantastic i've enjoyed i've enjoyed the transition of certain uh comic books to live action um i think yes. that umbrella academy is a brilliant example of that Yep. Do you like Umbrella Academy? Are you familiar with it? I found uh, I haven't read the comic, but I did see the Netflix show. Oh, you did. Uh, I thought it was it. Uh, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it either. I was okay with it. I, I found it very interesting. You know, mm. was, put it this way: there were elements of it I found more interesting than the overall final product. Put it that way. Okay. I think it's yeah. open. I think it's opened up possibilities for the for the Next future. Season. Yeah, for the next yeah. season and everything. Um, I mean, I don't know. Marvel can't put a foot wrong after Endgame. They just put a nice, they put a bow on yeah. it, didn't they? Because I haven't really spoken yeah. to you since we've kind of finished. Because we oh, were, at, yeah. God, we were just a before Thor, Thor three. Before yeah, we, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, Thor yeah. Ragnarok before we uh, wrapped. So that yes, was like, you know, correct. and then that came out. So that was kind of like the last phase of yeah. that era of Marvel. And I think they did a wonderful job. I wish they'd do the same. And I think they will. I think they'll eventually find their groove with Star Wars. Um, I think what they'll do is they'll end up getting people like Jon Favreau. They've already got... Yeah. Um, uh, to, I'm, I'm going to say this. Tiki what Wat- Khan. Like it was yeah, <laughs> Taika Waititi. There you go, Taika Waititi. There you Waititi, go. Yeah. Um, I think they're they're in the right idea about bringing people like that together, and I think yes. that there's a little bit of you know Kevin Farhi, John Favreau. There's there's, there's some yeah. puppeteering going on back there. Um, but you need that. You need that. That individual at the top that has the singular vision. And make sure that it all comes together. Well, George That's Lucas is coming. Well, George Lucas is back in the picture, isn't he? I don't know. I, I, I don't know about it. I genuinely don't know. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I do think. I, I think. Put it this way: I understand how, for some filmmakers, working on a Marvel film has proven to be quite a frustrating experience because they feel like they don't have as much creative freedom as they would have on other projects because they have Kevin Feige from above saying, make sure you tie this in with that and make sure you make a reference to this Mm -hmm. and that type of thing. And I understand that you have filmmakers, go, the more experienced filmmakers going, I just want to do what I want to do kind of thing, which which explains why they get a lot of indie, uh, like independent directors who maybe did indie features, which... uh, you know, we, and then they offer them the chance to work on a big Marvel project because it gives that way the, those directors, it gives them that stepping stone into doing bigger budget projects. Yeah. But they don't have the experience to push back and say, this is what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they'll just go along with what uh, Kevin Feige wants them to do. But by all means, bloody hell, after the money that Endgame has made, uh, uh, of course, he's not going to stop doing that just yet. <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I think there's there's a certain element of. I wouldn't say that the Marvel films are safe, in some of the mm. things that they've done. Um, they uh, I mean, like I said, Thor Ragnarok was a prime example. That was a complete switch around yeah. of of whole character and and um, and law, and the way that that character was presented to the Kenneth Branagh vision, which was at the very yeah. beginning, which was you know sort of like you know space wizard um yeah <laughs> and then and then they kind of like made it fun and then the, the the second one which was the um uh the one with the dark elves again yeah. very different you know you couldn't you could almost kind of like those are three separate films but then they you know they suddenly that final vision became 
the, yeah. the vision for well, it became the vision for so many other things like Guardians of the Galaxy uh, lent into that whole um, style uh, that comedy mm. style cosmic type stuff I think Ant-Man l- l- was always going to be a comedy but that kind of l- yes. lent into it yeah. as well so you've kind of mm. got you've almost got like the subcategories um, yeah where it's kind of like you can no, show it, it is a very fine a fine balance that they seem to have got right because like you said they're not uh, what I wouldn't say is that they're not or there is there is a formula to Marvel films but I wouldn't say they're all formulaic I never no. watch every Marvel film going oh, this is exactly like the last one you know I said they're, yeah. they're obviously they're parallels but they're never it's never okay not never but almost never uh, a retread of what they did before no you know? I think that so, uh, for me, this I think the safest, the safest kind of Marvel ones that have been produced have been the Sony ones, which has been Spider Man, Spider Man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They are very much, almost kind of like the, almost like the kind of animated adaptations. You know, they're kind of building a different audience. They're kind of building yeah. a, a, a a kind of like you know, they're trying to mesh little bits of marvel in there but actually mm-hmm. they're not they're sort of not a marvel film or they're sort of they're part of a different vision they're they're part of a different journey because those films mm-hmm. like with the sinister sticks and things like that they're going to they're going to go somewhere different they are um but it's going to be interesting now that fox they've got all the fox stuff now so oh gosh when when Wolfie, that baby. news when that news came out Oof. i thought Gosh, the, the world's their oyster now. Oh, mate. And yeah. props, and you know what? Res, props to them for they could have easily rushed Fantastic yeah. Four and X Men into production as soon as that yeah. deal was made. Yeah. And instead, they've made, well, they've, Kevin Feige's made the, um, okay, it's not just him, there's more people, but still, yeah. let's say it's him. Uh, he spearheaded it, um, have decided, no, take our, t- take our time. Let's explore some other lesser known characters yeah. like the Eternals and Shang Chi and try and build an audience for those characters now, which yeah. I think is is very admirable. Yeah. I mean, I remember when they announced Guardians of the Galaxy back in 2012. Like, who are they? Who? You know, who? <laughs> That's great. It's great that they do that. Yeah. Know? But they are some of the yeah. most popular characters as well, and oh, also, now they are, yeah, yeah, and but also they they had actually wet their feet with um uh what was it uh earth's mightiest hero heroes when you go back to the cartoons the animated stuff yeah guardians of the galaxy were in there a lot of kind of uh the the uh, like zemo um yeah there, there were a lot of like the baddie characters and everything like that that were just in the cartoons and they're kind of that cartoon packs in a lot it does say. i've it tried to go back down. and watching them all and it's just like where's this going oh are these I, guys in I, it? Watched, I watched it all with nolan because he got that he got uh andy and nicky gave him um, that for it for, for christmas or his mm. birthday one year and we watched it all and i just remember going bloody hell they cover a lot of ground ronin <laughs> I mean, Ronin comes and fights the Avengers in one of them, doesn't he? Ronin actually yeah, attacks yeah, Earth. And I was like, uh, Ronin? I, I was like, I didn't know who Ronin was when I watched yeah. Guardians. And also, that, that show does a really good job of saying, you know what? Stop picking on Hawkeye. He's a bloody badass when he wants. He's a badass with those arrows. He really is. I yeah, don't I think know. I think, I think Jeremy Renner He's is. the most underrated Avenger for me. I, I really love The more the years go by, the more love I've got for Hawkeye. I really... I, I think it's only the MCU that ever made him underrated. You know, um, but they kind of took the piss out of him, call him Legolas and things like that. But, you yeah. know, I think Jeremy yeah. Renner, you know, or the, the character that Jeremy Renner played and also Jeremy Renner off screen as well took it all yeah. quite very well you know he didn't get pissed off about it or anything and he just went yeah but then when he became you know when he became the ronin not ronin but it ronin um at the end they kind of you know they kind of gave him that really how dangerous he really is um he had he had one of the best um character arcs in endgame i thought a second only to tony stark and steve rogers in that film i thought um I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, 
I think, I about, really, I think emotionally, really... Black Widow had a quite a oh yeah, poignant... yeah. no no she, she did too. But put it this way, but they this is probably why it stood out for me because all the others had good parts in good films beforehand. I felt like this was the first time Jeremy Renner had a lot of really good material to work with. Yeah, I think you so. Know. Well, they show. Yeah. I mean, he was the first. It was he was in the first scene of the biggest oh, yeah. movie. Of the biggest movie yeah. in the franchise, he was in the first episode of it. He's, he in, the, the yeah, he's in the first scene. Yeah. And, and he's got his own his own show coming up. And I'm delighted that it's based on one of the best uh, runs that Marvel's produced in the past decade. What's that? Really? What's he coming in? Uh, he, uh, Hawkeye. Uh, he's going to be in his... He's got his own uh, Disney Plus show coming oh, up. Oh, is that the years. one where he... Um, Kate Bishop... He's going to be training Kate Bishop. Yeah, Kate Bishop with a uh, young female Hawkeye, his successor. He said and a young female Hawkeye, his successor, but he actually calls his daughter Hawkeye in Endgame. Yeah, which is which which that's one of those things where I feel like oh, I wish they hadn't done that because now they you know people are going to point that out to them. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, just to just because we we'll, we'll end soon, but I want to kind of like yeah. the the funeral scene. Um, mm. raise some questions which the people yes. are like mm, what's going to happen there because the kid from Iron Man 3 Harley yeah, yeah. Harley whatever his name is yeah. I mean who was the basically you know he was like a Tony Stark copy as a kid a yeah. protege you don't know what kind of relationship yeah, yeah. they all had but um, you know he was there and everything this has raised questions about him also, his daughter. Yeah, you know they could actually spin forward, however many years, and his daughter. I mean, it would only take what? How old was she? She was about six, wasn't she? It would yeah. only take ten years of of uh, of um, like storyline, you know, to to actually get her to an Thank age God. where she should possibly be somebody in the, in that position. Um, so who in- knows? Who knows? Indeed, you know it's there's so many possibilities. They they can take it in so many different directions from there. Um, Winter Soldier, Winter Soldier, and Falcon and the Winter Soldier is an interesting one as well. I love the way that they gave him the shield. I had to tell my mate that because uh, my mate, um, my um, best man uh, at my wedding, that was his shield. Because he was he was Captain America. He's black as well. And he's like, oh, he said, I've never seen a black Captain America. I said, there you go. <laughs> and I picked up the issue of yeah, yeah, yeah. the new Captain America. Oh, that's, America that, that's actually one of the, that's a really good run I read recently. The mm. expensive, uh, and it's called Hashtag Not My Captain America. Oh, really? And it's exactly with that, with the fact with Sam Wilson taking over as Captain America having to deal with the insecurities he feels about uh, being in Steve Rogers' shadow mm. and the fact that he doesn't have a super soldier serum. He's very human, you know? Yes. And, uh, the, and also the fact that the nation is, says, well, a very large part of the nation says, that's not my Captain America. Uh, I don't recognize him as Captain America and start the hashtag, the social media campaign. Wow. And then he feels also him being an African-American man he is. He feels the pressure from the African American community for fighting their cause, as oh, well. You know, to me, so he feels good. that is a, a a man torn in so many different directions. So, what series trying- is this? I want to recommend this. I really need to look at this. This is all right. This is called. Uh, this is Nick Spencer's run on, and it's called Captain America: colon, Sam Wilson. Okay, or, Captain sorry, America. No, Sam, Sam Wilson. Or either that or Sam Wilson: colon, Captain America. And is America. it a volume? Is it a volume series yeah, where you yeah, can get a graphic uh, novel with all the volumes in it? There's four or five volumes, I believe. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll tell. I say this straight off the bat. The very first volume is rubbish. Right. But then. Uh, from the second one onwards, it gets better and better, and it it's um, it has a, a, without giving away spoilers, it had the final volume is a rather muted finale. Okay. It's not some big final battle. It's actually one of the most reflective okay. things I've seen. I'm very very how can I say? It feels very current yeah. like that, and so that's why I'm hoping, and it's looking like. Um, 
uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the upcoming Disney Plus show, is going yeah. to be based on that run. Oh, brilliant! Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Because it's not because it's not um a hundred percent, but they do think that you know the Winter Soldier is going to probably become Captain America anyway. Um, spoilers, but I I hope I, he, I think he is. I think Bucky's. Going I hope he to, doesn't. Though. Because I feel like there's no because I feel like in the MCU they the way they've done the Winter Soldier, I like it like I like what they've done with him. I don't feel it would add anything to him becoming uh no. Captain America. I feel like Sam Wilson, who in said, like I said, he's very human. I, I, I as I get older, I realize I gravitate more to heroes who don't have powers because I find because I feel like if I'm a god with a hammer, you know, I can anyone can go into battle like yeah. if you're a god with a, with a, a hammer if instead you're a regular human being with just a shield or a bow and arrow or or a collapsible stick you know um the stakes are much higher and mm. you can identify a lot more with that one of the best panels i've ever seen is from uh, daredevil's run uh so mike brian michael bendis's run on daredevil where daredevil gets whacked against a car by some super powered super villain and he gets uh, thrust against this police car, he cro- no, he and he just gets it back on his knees. And the police officer next to him goes, "Are you okay?" And he goes, "No." And he gets up and goes back into battle. Yeah, I think that was such a. Uh, I mean, yeah, moment. Daredevil has been one of the most, um, one of yeah. the most successful versions of like you know the Netflix series and things like that. Seeing real yeah, yeah. pain that that guy oh, yeah, has gone yeah, through yeah. to actually do what he does and he still does it. You know, yeah. that's that's the kind of thing, yeah, you know, the beating and bruising it's and everything. So the most consistently brilliant character they've got, I'd say, mm-hmm. Daredevil. Like, ev- like it, he seems to bring out the best in all the writers and artists that work on Daredevil, all mm-hmm. the comics. I have not picked up a Daredevil, Daredevil comic. I was like, well, that was rubbish. You know, mm-hmm. it was they're all like really, really good. Yeah, very, uh, you know, very underestimated those ones, which are the kind of the dark Marvel series, isn't mm-hmm. it? It's the kind of street level Marvel. You've got like cosmic yeah. world kind of street level yeah. Marvel and they're kind of the street level Marvel of like the Luke Cage. That's why like, I've got a lot of love for you, for your Daredevils, for Hawkeye, for Moon Knight, uh, for Sam Wilson's Captain America, you know, when he's, you know, when he's uh, actually fighting on the streets of New York rather than, you mm-hmm. know, soaring above the skies, fighting some alien spaceship. And and Steve Rogers when he's on Captain regular Captain America when he's uh, when he's on the when he's on the ground I I like it when they're firmly on the ground in that way. Well, to be fair, you could say then you could argue the point that Tony Stark's the same. He doesn't have any powers apart from his brain. That's it. That's yeah. His power. Yeah. But he's surrounded but by like, technology. I, I, tend to, I tend to relate less to. Um, to, to, do you know this one? I've, so if, if we tell me if we need to stop, or is going to have to split it into two episodes? Um, the one who I one run that I've in, I did not expect to enjoy as much as I did recently is Donny Cates's run on Venom. Yeah, I've never been a fan, a big fan of Venom, but right. um, because. Very often I'm like, well, okay, he's just, you know, he's just all, he's very much a product of the eighties. You know, he's very, he's like a, basically a big bodybuilder, you know, with, with sharp teeth and all of that. But, uh, and very often he's been, they use met- venom as a metaphor for substance addiction. Yeah. Works. Uh, and so Donny Gates did a, he's done, he's put a very different spin on it. He approaches the relationship between, uh, Eddie Brock and Venom, the symbiote, mm. as an abusive relationship. Yeah. So okay. like, I want to get rid of like this drug. substance. Yeah. But I feel, no, not so much a drug, like an abusive partner. Oh, so okay. like, I want, yeah. get, I want to get rid of you, but I feel lost when I'm not with you. I know you're bad for me, but I can't live without you. Kind mm. of that kind of thing. And yeah, it just taps into the bruised psychology of a man of a man who's you know been battered by an abusive partner basically see now i I think that kind of narrative Mm -hmm. works very well with cat the 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 depiction of um like the tom hardy version yeah i think that does work in i thought that that i don't know it was just it was a very hard sell it was a very hard Mm -hmm. sell that 
that movie because it's like it's a movie about a bad guy in the Marvel yeah. universe. That's a very hard sell. I don't think there's any. Well, I, th- I think they're doing. Um, what's the one with Jared Leto? Um, it's the vampire. Oh, Morbius. Morbius. So they're Mor- doing Morbius. I watched Bloodshot the other day. Oh, yeah. That's not good. That's not a good yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I tend to steer clear of Vin Diesel, to be honest. I like Vin Diesel as a chap, but don't, don't like his. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was, I was more, I was more upset that, like, you know, the trailer because I did watch the trailer for it like ages ago, and I was like, this yeah. is the whole movie. This is the whole oh, movie. Yeah. Every plot twist, everything. That trailer was like, what's man. the point in that? And it was. No, it was no, the no. whole movie. There was no surprises in that movie whatsoever. It was just yeah. like, well, why, you know, why do that? But yeah, it is, it is hard. Now, now that's fine. I mean, if, if Sony think they can get away with it, they're going to go with Woody Harrelson for, for Carnage. Um, yeah. You know, if they can suddenly get people hooked on to not so much anti-heroes, but actual villains, because they are actual villains. They did, yeah, I think yeah. they did okay with, I think they did okay with Vulture. I'm going to be honest. I think they did. I think that, Oh, what you mean? The Michael way he was Keaton. depicted. Well, yeah, because yeah. Michael Keaton. Because I was like, I'd watch him again. You know, yeah. it's, it's almost like it's almost like kind of Jack Nicholson's Joker, Jack Nicholson's Joker, um, and Heath Ledger's Joker. You know, yeah, evil pieces of work, but you you would watch them in a second if they came back. You yeah, know, if you made a movie oh, about them tomorrow, I'm in. Yeah, you know, even though they're villains. And it's just like, yeah. well, that you shouldn't be rooting for those people. You know, you yeah. root for Batman. You root for, you know, you root for the other people. Yeah. You don't root for them. But they're so captivating, those characters, so you, you think. Yeah. They got uh, they got the Academy to root for Joker. So if they can do that, they can get you to root twice. for all the different villains. Twice. Yes, exactly, twice. Twice. I don't, um, did, did Batman, the original Batman, get a nod? from the Academy for Jack Nicholson, did he? Which one? The one with Jack Nicholson? Yeah, Jack Nicholson and um, Michael Keaton. Um, I think he was I think he was nominated. I don't Was think he nominated? He won but he didn't win anything, though. No. But yeah, but the... But yeah, he I mean, might the have jo- been nominated. I don't know, but I think he should... I think he was nominated. I mean, that was a pretty iconic time as well, and it was one of the biggest selling movies at the time, I remember. It was people getting yeah, flipping yeah, bat symbols cut in the back of their hair <laughs> back then. <laughs> Not me, Brilliant. but yeah, that was it. Yeah. Steps. It was all steps. Steps with yeah. <laughs> anyway. Well mate, it's been absolute pleasure. I think um yes. we need to uh, yeah. let you have some of a, a a Friday night. I'm really, really stoked to have you back on and um yeah, and just chat about this that. stuff. Please come back. I say this. Yeah, Please come back because especially, you know, bring a stack of comic books and film um stuff with you and we'll talk we'll geek out. And we'll do yeah. that um, because it's always, mate. I think everybody needs a man cave, man. So this one's always open. So, whatever in whatever form that tape, whatever yeah. form or shape that takes, you do need a man cave. So what are you saying, <laughs> then, man? Like what, after Corona, what are we thinking next March? Comic Con, oh, hey, we get the we get the man cave T-shirts out. Go back. Thank you. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I think so. I think that's going to be a good one. So, right, I'm going to sign yeah. off. Remember, everybody, please, if you've enjoyed this, then uh, um, please uh, like the video, subscribe, check out our Twitter, check out Instagram and Facebook. Uh, there's more on there. Uh, my guest, Michael, has been brilliant. And um, we'll see you again soon. Thanks very much. See you soon. Bye.